How do you clear a tune that has so many instrumentals? Oh, me. This is <laughs> I've never come across a tune with so many. Over I mean, it's like a mixtape. Yeah. Like, like, I love the fact that you keep on moving. It's like drum and bass MCs. Mm. I think it's got, it's, it's such a U USP to it. But then I, I do think to myself, yeah, that's, uh, it's fraught on a number of levels. <laughs> Boy, I'll be, you know what? Like, a lot of people have asked me, but I just did it. And I haven't, like, we're going to talk about clearance and things like that. None of that took place. This is like, again, remember, I'm coming from under the underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is normal. Although it's not normal, maybe, to be pushed so wide mm. or, you know what I mean? To mm. have, but ramming over other people's beats and instrumentals mm. is something we've been doing since way back but when. But this is the Dapper Dan of instrumentals right here. This is just <laughs> like every single... Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Culture. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes. Yes, people, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you could possibly be. We are in Brixton, no less. Big shout to Brixton Streetwear um, for all uh, the support at the moment. Underground here, it's really than real can be um, in the Brixton Village. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Uh, and always a pleasure inside the house. We're talking lyrics, we're talking lyricism, we're talking artistry on a global level. If you don't know, then you've clearly been lying under a rock somewhere, this gentleman been flying out gold flowers left right and center 13 minute track none less of completing lyrics uh, of all genres and eras <laughs> goes by the name of desert eagle how are you my brother I'm good brother yourself yeah keep that up against all you right, so we're gonna yeah. lose you baby how all are right. you i'm good thanks yourself yeah, yeah i'm good i'm good it's nice. a pleasure to, a pleasure to have you here a pleasure to be here now you're flying ain't you you know you, you you've only been here for a small stint and you're, yeah. you're heading back home right i'm heading back home i came in um last wednesday Mm. Leaving on Friday, came to do that uh, Benny the Butcher show. You know, you casual. Know I mean? yeah. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Ghana. Right, Ghana in the house. Come on. Yeah. Get so that's out. that's where I'm living now. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's, what's the climate like? What's the vibe like? I've never been. The vibe is um, it's lit over there, man. Very free spirited, welcoming, yeah. loving, spiritual place. Yeah. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? And there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot going on, you get me? The but music scene popping. Music scene's popping as well. It's crazy, yeah. Get me? It's been making a lot of noise recently. Yeah, making a lot of noise, making a lot of moves, linking mm. a lot of people, mm. and just doing the work, man. Mm. It's been a long time coming, really. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. been on the underground scene for a hot minute, dipping in and out. Mm. You know what I mean? But right about now, where my head is and what I really want to do and where I'm at in life, it's like... It's goal time for the mm. music, you know what I mean? For sure. Let's stick with that for a minute because, like you say, we cut our chops in different lanes and work hard and do everything we possibly can, um, working with the time frames that we have. And then you get these sudden uh, bursts of energy, mm. you know, where something in output suddenly unlocks a certain code to a, to a, a, a vault door and then mm. open it up. There's a lot of that in your, in your history. How do you reap those moments? How do you capitalise on the moments? Because just sticking with gold flowers, I mean, it's a quite a landmark tune. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a, the, it's such a unique concept. Yeah. Um, how, how do you maximise on those moments? Um, how to maximise on them, really, I think, with, I think maybe if to say before, it was just a case of... Because um, I love the music so much. Mm. I was always putting the music out for the love of it anyway. Mm -hmm. So me just being active, making the music and putting it out there so people can hear it mm -hmm. was probably about my, my biggest kind of maximization. Mm -hmm. Whereas at the moment now, you know, like for example, with Gold Flowers, it's like, nah, like rather than me just putting something out there and whoever come across it, come across it, or who knows, knows, it's more of let me let me push it further, mm. especially in the places where, you know, I've got people who can take it places or 
Do you know what I mean? Let more people see and hear and know what's going on. Leverage. Leverage. Do you know what I mean? Because, again, like you said, innit? I mean, the music needs to be heard. Mm. The music needs to be heard. And everybody's always on my case as well. That I'm not, maybe, you know, like I'm saying beforehand, they wanted to see me doing more. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see me in mm. bigger places mm. and doing a lot more with my music. You know what I mean? So at the moment, how to maximise on it? It's just me pushing as hard as I can and making sure I make use of the network that I have. Elaborate on what you were just going to there, because you sounded like you were going somewhere and then then double backed a bit. So, where from did a, I where did I turn from a, from a from a people that I do you feel like they have an expectation of position and you elevating? Is that it? Was that a? I th yeah, I will say so. But that kind of comes from, when I say if expectation, I think it comes from people who believe in me, mm. people who love the music mm. and think that I deserve to be on bigger platforms yeah, or man. more people need to know who mm. I am and mm. about my music. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so it comes on a Killer Keller podcast, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Come Had on. to. Click, click, bang. Yeah, um, I mean. How do you clear a tune that has so many instrumentals? Oh, mate. <laughs> I've never come across a tune with so many. Of a, I mean, it's like a mixtape. Yeah. Like, like I love the fact that you keep on moving. It's like drum and bass MCs. Mm. I think it's got it's it's such a U, USP to it. But then I, I do think to myself, yeah, that's uh, it's fraught on a number of levels. <laughs> Boy, I'll be, you know what? Like a lot of people have asked me, but I just did it. And I haven't, like, we're going to talk about clearance and things like that. None of that took place. This is like, again, remember, I'm coming from under the underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is normal. Although it's not normal, maybe, to be pushed so wide mm. or, you know what I mean? To mm. have, but ramming over other people's beats and instrumentals mm. is something we've been doing since way back but when. But this is the Dapper Dan of instrumentals right here. This is just like every <laughs> single... You're like, yeah. bit of that, bit of that. It's the ultimate, like, mashup. Yeah, man, you know, we follow... The, the, the beats follow the lyrics. The lyrics follow the beats. Yeah. It's all one thing. But the good, the beautiful thing about it, why I didn't really, you know, like I, it's got to go out, is mm. what I'm noticing when people hear it, it evokes a lot of feelings and takes people, but gives people memories, type of take people real. down memory lane. Yeah. You don't know what beat's coming next. You get what I'm saying? And by the time it catches, yeah. yeah so big, big, big responses that I've been getting from the tune, man. But it also exercises your uh, elasticity in understanding, yeah, it's, it's, it's it has its big up to you because you're able to explain the generations of MCing, mm. significant moments, how that made you feel, that resonates with a lot of people and how it made them feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a historical archivist in you, you yeah, know what I mean, yeah. where you're telling the story, but you're also adding kudos yeah, for yourself. exactly. Um, it's a good look. Exactly that, mm. man. Do you think MCing over the years has got to a point? <laughs> this is a wider debate, you understand, but like the idea of MCing and com coming of age and subgenres within hip hop mm. they lean very heavily to the youth movement um, youth culture so the simplicity and the lyrics are there but I always feel like there's a capping point to that young audience if they don't elevate into the, the more lyrical side of things and mm. I, I mean there's always room there's always room for growth for anyone mm. so it's just about which which set of them or which one of them or whatever gravitate towards it. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that all comes to do with influence and how open is your mind. Mm -hmm. Some people only want to stay in one lane and mm -hmm. that's cool for them. Mm -hmm. And then other people want to venture out and see what else is going on and embrace things. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I think when you talk about maybe like the simplicity of some people's lyricism compared to others and which then comes to depth and substance. Yeah. The depth and the substance will always go a longer way, I think. I think. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it lives longer. It means more for mm. a long period of time for because real. of where it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that lyricism comes, I guess, that depth comes with experience and being able to explain your thoughts. Mm. That's, that, that seems to be quite a hurdle but maybe not for a younger audience that also struggle to find a way yeah. of explaining themselves. Yeah, and there are, because there are some young MCs... For sure. ...that fit the bill. Right. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. think some people as well, you know, there are, like, 
when you're growing up, there's always like someone who's young, but they're an old soul. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So they gravitate to things that tend to be maturer than they're uh, supposed to be mm. at that age. You get mm. what I'm saying? But those people always are about. So like I'm saying, the room for the growth or the people who are just wired that way mm. will always emerge. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Go give them the space and the grace. Yeah. They'll always emerge. I think it's hard sometimes when people have conversations about music, mm. especially hip hop, the good stuff kind of, because there's a lot of good hip hop out there. Mm. There's a lot of lyricists out there. There's a lot of, mm. do you know what I'm saying? But then most people's conversation is about the bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> because the bullshit is what is directly in front of our faces. Yeah. It's what's being pushed and what's being mm. pumped. So it seems like, right, the real is missing. Mm. But it's not that it's missing. It's mm. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. you just have to, it's not pushed in your face. So if you don't, if you're not someone who maybe looks for new music or is always looking for new artists, mm. you'll miss it because you think what is right in front of you is all that there is. Yeah, that's right. It becomes like this big uh, uh, echo chamber mm. and you can't see past the echo yeah. chamber. Sometimes it takes one um, uh, entry hole, and that could be simplistic rhymes, that then opens a plethora of ideas of like, wow, yeah. that, 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 mm -hmm. that, that. You know, diving into um, high, high, high focus, for instance, record yeah. label. You know, that one Ocean Wisdom tune that tips you over that edge, mm. you know what I mean? That's what it's all about, isn't it? It's finding those entry holes for, for people to discover more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, because that's, that's, yeah, definitely. Which I guess maybe is where if you find a, a balance, it gets you away in. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you're in, more people know about you, but then look into you more. And if they buy into you more, mm -hmm. then they're going to feel what you come with. Mm -hmm. That's basically mm -hmm. how it goes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, balance, you just said. Uh, explain to me a day in the life of Desert Eagle. What's the a day in the life? Yeah. Boy. Right now. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> right now, a day in the life is um, I'm working on my businesses. I mean, I'm I'm working on music, which I'm making. You said businesses. So yeah, <laughs> but you know, mu on, music music is at the moment. I'd say like first and foremost what I'm 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 pushing for. Mm. But back home in Ghana I've you know, I'm running an Airbnb. Oh sick. Yeah, I've got a drinks com uh I've got a I'll be manufacturing drinks soon. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah man. What in Ghana? In Ghana, yeah. Yeah. So I've got my whole setup and all of that. Uh, I just recently got my FDA license. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so working on that. Um my daughter also lives with me over there. Awesome. So I'm like a full-time dad. What you just explained there is like a whole lifestyle thing that is it's an exotic. Yeah. It's a real exotic. It is. I fucking love that. You know what I mean? It's sun's hot every day. I live like I live like right by the coast as well. <laughs> so I'm literally like five minutes from the beach. Um yeah. Just surrounded by my people and getting busy, man. Yeah, how do you get how do you get in the zone? How do you ever get in the zone of writing lyrics when you're sitting on the beach? Well, and you think to myself, I'm gonna go and get myself one of my own drinks that I've just created. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you get yeah, to that? That's point, all man? you need, man. When you're in a good space, I think when you're I mean music's you know, I mean music comes from everywhere, innit? Yeah. So whether you're in a good space, bad space, you can always draw something from those spaces. Are you driven? Are you driven like you know, to the same level with your business? As your as your music, do you see it one and the same? Is it like a soundtrack to what you're doing? The business hand in hand with the music, you mean? Yeah. I mean, they go together um, because it's me. So, mm. do you know what I mean? I guess it starts and ends with me and what I do. Mm. So, they go together be for that reason. Um, outside of that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. But yeah, they do. They do. But you know, like I'm saying, I haven't started production just yet. Right. Production will start like very close to the end of this year. Man. I should launch in December. 
Man. God willing, you know what I mean? But what is the drink? What is the drink? What it's called of... tropical ice. Yeah? It's like a frozen cocktail. Really? <laughs> yeah. What, so what? Alcohol? Say that again? Alcohol. Alcohol. Frozen yeah. alcoholic cocktail. Yo, you that's know what I mean? Sounds good. Yeah, man. The sun ain't, the summer ain't gone yet. Still the summer ain't gone yet. As soon as they're ready as well, I mean, we've got plans to um, e export it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Side hustles. Yeah. And how that connects. Um, money in, in music. I'm certainly not saying there isn't any, because there is if you delve deep enough. But, mm. you know, these side hustles are the things that elevate you in, mm. a, in a way that, you know, that I think was once exploded by um, Will I Am, you know. You become the commodity. Mm. And then you, you know, you connect with the brands. But yeah. if you're your own brand, then it, it serves you. Yeah. And that income revenue stream. Mm. Artists are thinking a lot more about that these days, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Definitely seems that way. You see a lot of it going on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I guess especially as well, if maybe you're not making the type of mo money you want to make from music, mm. then, um, you know, products is what it is. Mm. Do you do live shows? Yeah. In, in Ghana as In all? Ghana as well, really? yeah. yeah. Fuffin. How do you do a tune that's 13 minutes long? How do you remember all the lyrics on that? Boy, I mean... I, it, it do you remember them? Yeah, I remember them. Stop it. I remember them, I remember them. <laughs> um, but I think it's just because with that one, it's... I've been dealing with it for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, you know, like, chopping up bits for content yeah yeah doing yeah, yeah, and yeah. hearing it a lot yeah. so and naturally reciting it mm. do you get what i'm saying and i knew i know as well that yeah i gotta i have to know these lyrics i have to no there's choice. no way yeah but by the time i finished when i had finished it first recording it i def i knew a lot of it mm. like it just kind of stuck in my head probably the first like 10 minutes yeah it's actually 16 minutes by the way really yeah See, there was me so, <laughs> thinking numeric dyslexia gets the better of me. It's 16 minutes long, but yeah. Um, so now, like I said, because I've been actually working on the track and doing a lot around it, mm. it's been playing a lot, and I've been purposely taking note and storing it in my mind. Yeah, so, for real. Yeah. But, um, if you're doing it as a PA, I mean, that's essentially like a, a DJ mix in itself. Mm. Like... He could be forgiven for standing behind the decks and just letting him roll like that. Yeah, yeah. People I, must dance to it. They must not listen, overthink it too much. Honestly, the first time I performed it was at that Benny the Butcher show on Friday. And um, I didn't perform all of it. Hmm. I just did roughly, I think I did just under five minutes. I did about four minutes of it. Because yeah, that's a lion's share of your set right there, just done one song. Yeah, <laughs> I did about four minutes of it. And um, yeah. boy, the, the crowd received it well, man. They showed a lot of love. They was vibing. Mm. You get me? A lot of people approached me after the show. You said, what's that tune? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, that Gold Flowers joint is crazy. Mm. Where can I hear it? Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? I, I got a lot of love and I appreciated it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it let me know, because cause it is so long, mm. um, I was sceptical about how would I perform it anyway. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You yeah, never want to get on the stage and be boring. Yeah. You get me? And then as well, because it's like lyrics from start to finish, there's mm. no hook. So even though the beats are changing, I had a little reservation about just me literally just spitting. Mm -hmm. But Friday showed me that the people them, the people them loved yeah. it, man. You know what I mean? I think if I actually carried on, they'd have, they would have just enjoyed it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? If you can't do it on a Benny Butcher Say that again? If you can't do it on a Benny Butcher lineup, it's all about bars. Yeah, well, exactly. I think it's quite refreshing actually because that that more gutter rap, Griselda mm. flavor. Mm. I remember Conway showing up way too late for my bedtime at Jazz Cafe, and the DJ was just spinning Griselda beats, and I'm like, oh please, just play some tunes I can really dance to and have a drink to. Yeah. Four hours of waiting. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like play some. So I'd imagine all that collection, that selection of beats that go across the 16 minutes of uh, yeah. that must be people must really get up on it. Yeah. Like, anyone who, like I said, I ain't had a bad word come back about it. Yeah. Like, I ain't had a bad word come back about it. Only good feedback, positive energy, high energy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that's what it, that's what it gives. Mm. That's what Gold Flowers gives, man. And so I'm just happy for it. I'm happy that it's out there and people are enjoying mm. it. It's all the influences as well. I mean, yeah, run us down. Who are your influences that... 
that take uh, on your, you know, that are on your mantelpiece well, as far as I mean, it starts. It starts with Big Daddy Kane. Mm. That is like, you Good know, what I mean, out the gate. That's how the um, Gold Flowers actually starts with the yes, right. Young Gifted and Black mm -hmm. instrumental. Um, and that's why it started with that, because Big Daddy Kane was the first rapper that I was introduced to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so, and then Wu-Tang is a big influence, Nas, big influence. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say Jay-Z, big pun. Big influence, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Dead in the middle of Little Italy. Dead in yeah, the middle of Little Italy. Come on, come <laughs> Get on. Get me? Yeah. Um, but just to mention a few, and I can never not mention Bionic. Bionic, of course, bruv. You know what I mean? He I, was, he, yeah, I mean, let's not get started on Bionic, man. He's just a, just a beast. He was like, our, he was like our punk of rap, that mm. whole ragga. He just had a, he had the voice for it, yeah. didn't he, you know? I mean, he had everything. Yeah, the do you know thing. what I mean? He had the he had the whole package, and it's not it's not every day someone like that comes around no. to make such a mark on music. Such an individual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean. So he was always a big influence for me. You know what I mean? But yeah, man. I mean, I could go on and on, but those I'd say are the main influences. I'll probably leave here and be like, oh, why didn't I say <laughs> this one? But yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. But you're a study. You're a study of the craft. Yeah. Nah, that's amplified in the music. Mm. Um, it's hard to define, you know, a question, you know, a question like that down to maybe like four or five. That's hours. what I'm saying. Dr. Too Dre, much. another big influence. Yeah. Huge. You get what I'm saying. Um, Individuals that really trailblazed mm -hmm. sound. Sometimes you get these ones like they just come out of nowhere. Barnick being one of them. Skinny Man. Mm. Um, Snoop Dogg. Exactly. You know, these are individuals that just changed the sh landscape yeah. and at that time i was a teenager yeah you know what i'm saying so yeah. all the influence like listening to their music and just fucking looking up to them innit? Mm. little kid listening to the snoop snoop and dre was the first concert i went to i forgot about 11. that's mad you at, went to one academy. of them yeah you went to one of them yeah I remember that back in the day i was about 11 brixton academy and I remember my uncle, my Uncle Jeddy took me, big up Uncle Jeddy as always, you get me? Uncle but um, yeah, he took me there and I remember the security guard saying, oh, keep him close, technically you shouldn't be here, whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? And then I went in there and the security put me up on the banister, up on the VIP banister so that I could see and all of that, you get me? So I had like a perfect spot to sit at. If you were born in the game, you were like, this is like, <laughs> this set up, look at the monster you created, Unks. Yeah, Jeez. for real. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Those uh, memories take you back? Yeah, definitely. Get me, but they're good memories, man. They're good memories. Same, like, I think after the Snoop concert, I went Wu-Tang concert. That was, like, a year later, maybe, mm. at Academy as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Different and times. Different times. Scary different times? times? Yeah, them times there were different to now. I mean, I say that, but because I guess for the youngsters now, for them, same way as scary times, because there's a lot going on. Mm. Like, amongst the youth, mm. as we know, mm. they're all carrying swords right now. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And when when I was that age, do you know what I mean? It was not, man weren't carrying swords, but knives, gas was a big mm. thing. Mm -hmm. Do you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, every now and then, yeah, certain man had guns and things like that, but, Really, I think like the gas and the knives were big. You get me? Mm. So yeah, it was like when you're young and you got like older characters that are out here active, getting busy mm. and that. Mm. You know what I mean? But I was always um, around certain individuals, so I've always been okay. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But I definitely. As a kid, I've definitely had scary times. I've had times when I'm scared. You know what I mean, yeah. growing up. You have to experience streetwise to to be streetwise. You can't, it's not this, you, you really got to be about it. Yeah. Be from it. Like to experience and be able to work and operate. Yeah. yeah. You got to go through some things, man, and learn some things. Yeah. If you don't go through them, you don't learn them. Yeah, I think to a lot of people, the casual passing of a tune 
or a bar or a verse. They don't realize the weight behind it. The 10,000 hours of experience that led to even mm, just those shifts mm, of words mm. and sentences. Do you know what I mean? Very true. I mean, as you put it like that, I don't even know that I do. Really? If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I no, get what you're because saying. Because I, I definitely know. You don't realize what it is that's The seen... way you just said, the way you just put it like that, mm. it's like, yeah. Like, I definitely know that, yeah, you, as we've said, like, you've got to live it and the music comes from a real place. Mm. So definitely it's a, a build up of everything that man has been through and then maybe whatever, whatever moment in time that made me write certain mm. lyrics and things like that. Mm. So you're right because it's a whole build up of whatever you went through in life until that happened. So everything that happened before is a part of how you reacted to it and how you learnt from it. And 100. so when you then come out with it, yeah. So 100. that's what I'm saying. You just, the way you put it was like, oh yeah, yeah. shit. Like I know about the way you put it is something different. Like, to see, me. I got lyrics too, see. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure, bruv. What's the future then, apart from these jinx and, uh, and what, you got more, yeah. more events? I mean, like I'm saying, uh, events, um, I'm working, you know what, I will be doing a, um, I will be doing some kind of exhibition around Gold Flowers. Oh. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, hold on, what do you mean an exhibition? Well, when I say an exhibition, I won't even, well... There's no spoilers, it's cool. Do it. But when you say exhibition, that sounds a little bit more uh, contemporary and uh, out there. A bit. A bit, maybe, because what I will do, what I will say is I will perform gold, gold flowers uh, from start to finish. Really, really? But it's going to be slowed down and it's going to be special. Wow. Do you get what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's kind of the most I want to give on it at the moment. That's, oh. that's the most I'll give on it at the moment. Concepts are rolling around in my head where that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely the, everything that we're working on at the moment is, um, yeah, it's going to be live, man. Something you won't want to miss. So as soon as I start putting it out there. Get it on. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you get the tickets and be a part of it. You know what I mean? Well, we all know you've got more tunes than just the one, but that concept is amazing. And if uh, if that one tune's anything to go by, we're looking forward to the rest of the yeah, season, man. my brother. Definitely got a lot coming, man. Mm. Definitely got a lot coming after, for sure. <laughs> There's an eagle in the place. Killer Keller. Yeah, come on, my God. legend. <laughs> what a pleasure. What a pleasure. Bricks and streetwear. You know what it is, you know what it do. Killer Keller podcast. Our lighting was out of fashion, all right? Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? <laughs> you stay lucky and don't talk to anyone, and I wouldn't. Easy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was sick. Yeah, we went deep for a second, yeah, right? no, that was-